Merry Christmas! Welcome to Day 25 of Advent of Code 2022. In this video, I'll be explaining the solutions to the final puzzle of this year called Full of Hot Air. It's a bit of math, um, but I'll explain my thought process as well as the math as concisely as I can while still being clear. You'll get to see my code, explanations, and everything after a quick time lapse. Again, if you want to see my code, it's going to be in the description as usual, so be sure to check out that GitHub repository. And yeah, let's get started with the time lapse. Okay, so really there was only a singular puzzle today because with Advent of Code, usually how it goes is the last day you do one puzzle to get a star, and then you get another star for free just to round out the year. So today's puzzle is all about departing. We're boarding some hot air balloons with the elves um, to get back to the North Pole after collecting all the star fruit that we need. So essentially what we have here is we have a hot air balloon that we need to enter a code into. Rather, it's a machine that is uh, heating up our fuel, and it needs to calculate the total amount of fuel needed for all the hot air balloons. So all the hot air balloons have a number written on them, but the number isn't in base 10. It's in this weird thing called SNAFU, which stands for Special um, Number Airlog and Number numeral analog fuel units um so snafu i'm just going to call it snafu that's what i use in my code um we have all these numbers on all the hot air balloons and we need to sum them together and then also output the answer in snafu so here's how snafu works it is basically balanced base five if you uh, are familiar with that and the basic idea is let's take a number let's say um 20 in snafu the number 20 in snafu stands for 2 times 5 plus 0 times 1 so this is standard base 5 so far um, and this is going to equal 10. Um, let's take a more complicated number let's say um, 2 0 I mean 2 equals 0 equals so what equal stands for is double minus and essentially double minus is a negative 2 so what we have here is basically same thing as base 5 um, we have negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. We have 0 times 5, which is 0. Negative 2 times 25, which is negative 50. And 2 times 125, which is 250. And in total, this makes, let's see, 198. So you can kind of see how this number system works. If you aren't familiar with uh, changing bases, in particular like base 5 to base 10, or any base conversions in general, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, describe how base base number systems work. But basically, um, this is the same as base 5, except the digits are from negative 2 to 2 instead of uh, from 0 to 4. And we can prove this mathematically that this is a valid number system, and every number has a unique representation um, in SNAFU, and also every number in SNAFU is a valid number in general. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we're given a list of numbers in SNAFU and we have to convert them all to like regular integers because they're given as strings. So this is pretty standard for now. Um, first thing we do is we read in our string. So that's just parsing all of the lines in the input. We can turn that into a string. Yeah. And then reverse it around because index zero is going to be the kind of least significant digit in here. And we want that just for good computation. So going back to this, let's pick a different number. Um, let's grab one from the inputs, hopefully one that has a one and a minus, let's say one equals minus one equals. So one, one equals minus one equals. Um, how do we parse this number in snafu? Well, first we're going to reverse the index. So now the indices are going to go zero, one, two, three, four. Um, reversing the string in Python is pretty straightforward. We just do a index slice, um, slice backwards. Um, so here are the indices, and how do we convert this to base 10? Well, we're going to go digit by digit. So digit 0 uh, is going to be an equal sign, which is really a negative 2, and we can map this using a uh, Python dictionary. That's what I used here. So that's a negative 2, and we're going to have negative 2 times 5 to the power of 0. So 5 to the 0, we're going to contain this in this variable p, which we're going to increment as we go to the left. Um, so that's going to be 2 times 5 to the 0. And then we iterate again to the left. Um, that's going to be 5 to the 1's place. And that's going to add a 1 times 5 to the 1. And then we iterate again. We're going to have a minus sign, convert that to a minus 1. And then we're going to have a negative 1 times 5 squared. Iterate again to the left. We're going to have to deal with 5 cubed. That's an equals, which is a minus 2. So that's negative 2 times 5 cubed. And then finally, we have a 1 times 5 to the 4. Um, and after we compute all of those place values, then we can just add them up and that's going to be our answer. So part one, 
pretty straightforward. We can just have this function, which takes a string in Snafu and converts it to base 10 by iterating and doing those powers of five things. Okay, so once we have converted all the lines to integers and added them up, we need a way to turn an integer into a Snafu string. So how do we do that? Well, the key thing to recognize is that this sort of works like base five. So let's take that number 198 again. And if you're not familiar with how to turn base 10 numbers into base five, that's okay. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we have a bunch of digits that are going to represent 198 in Snafu, and we're gonna look at the units digit. So this units digit is pretty easy to find. We might not know what the other digits are, but the units digit only has five choices, negative two, negative one, zero, one, or two. And this depends solely on the remainder when this number n is divided by 5. So when 198 is divided by 5, it's going to leave a remainder equal exactly to this last digit because all of this is already 0 um, mod 5. All this front part is already divisible by 5 because they all have a factor of 5 somewhere in their base. Um, so all we need to do is look at the last digit to determine um, or rather the remainder when n is divided by 5 tells us what the last digit is. So 198 is equivalent to negative 2 mod 5, which just means that it leaves the same remainder when divided by 5 as negative 2, um, because both are equivalent to 3 as well. So we know that the last digit is going to be um, negative 2, and that's going to be the 1's digit in this snafu number. Okay, um, then moving backwards, we know that this section is going to be 0 mod 25, because all of those bases are divisible by 25, and we just need to do n um, minus minus two. So we're going to forget about this digit over here. We're going to get rid of it. And we're going to do n minus negative two to kind of get rid of that. That's going to be 200. So we need to do 200 using these first few digits. And you can kind of see this is kind of a recursive solution, but uh, we can also do this iteratively. So to find 200 um, in Snafu, we need to look at the remainder when it is divided by 25, because that's going to tell us the fives place. So um, everything else is already divisible by 25. We also know that 200 is divisible by 25, so it has a remainder of 0 when divided by 25. Therefore, this digit is 0 because we don't want any uh, multiples of 5 mod 25. Okay, after we do that, we do n minus 0 because that's a uh, zeros digit, and then we move on to the rest. You can kind of see where this is going, so I'm going to just do one last example. Um, this first bit is going to be 0 mod 125, so we need to look at the remainder when n minus 0, um, well, after it's been updated, is divided by 125. So 200 is equivalent to... 75 mod 125 so that means this digit is equivalent to a 3 because 3 times 25 is equivalent to 75 but 3 is not a valid digit in snafu so we're going to have to use negative 2 um, as a substitute and then after that we have n minus um, so this whole digit represents negative 50 n minus negative 50 is going to be 250 um, and then to represent 250 in these first few digits we just have to look at 2 times 125 um, because that's, I mean, that's the remainder when it's divided by 625, I guess. Or you could just see that it's um, a 2 in this place. So now we know that the snafu representation of 19, uh, 198 is 2, minus 2, 0, minus 2. And to convert that back into a string, we can use a mapping similar to the first one. Here, I'm using a Python sort of reverse dictionary thing where we map values to keys. Um, using this pretty simple dictionary comprehension. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the puzzle. All we have to do is kind of parse a balanced base 5 number. Um, balanced because the num digits go both negative and positive and on the same on either side. Um, and then convert all those numbers into base 10, or rather just regular numbers in the computer. They're actually stored in binary. So we take those numbers, we sum them up, and then we convert that back into snafu using our little uh, mod method. So actually just taking a look at this, um, function that takes a number and turns into a snafu string. Uh, basically what we do is we map the remainder when n is divided by 5 continually um, and then truncate it by one digit to get ex all of the digits because once we get a digit um, we know that this number is going to be 0 mod whatever power of 5 and then we figure out what that remainder is when divided by the next power of 5 this is sort of a more recursive solution because we're literally truncating digits. But again, if you want to see my code, that's going to be linked in the description below. Do check that out. Okay, so no part two to explain here. So I guess that's it for Advent of Code 2020. Although in actuality, I, I still have two more stars to collect in days 16 and 17. 
Those are the cave searching days and the Tetris days where you have the falling rocks. So I will do those sometime, hopefully before the end of the year, but no promises necessarily. Um, those puzzles are a bit more challenging, but I'll make explanations when I have the time. So do look out for those. I guess AOC 2022 isn't over entirely, but if you're watching this in the far future and I have already made those videos, that's the end of the series. I hope these videos have been helpful for you solving these puzzles and maybe just seeing what other people are doing. But it's certainly been a wild ride. I mean, it's not over for me yet, but it's been a fun year. Doing these puzzles has really gotten me into the holiday spirit, and I've appreciated doing this with each and every one of you. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about today or any previous days, do feel free to leave that down in the comments below. So that's it for Advent of Code 2022. I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Thank you for watching.